Today on the channel, we're talking El Reno. We're talking about that El Reno tornado in 2013. I chased it. A lot of other people chased it. I'm going to talk about what I did that day. And I'm also going to talk about some safety lessons that you certainly could take away from that. And also why that tornado really wasn't that unique. All of that right after this. So today on the channel, we're talking El Reno uh, for a lot of reasons. I think there's a lot of safety lessons that could be learned, but the mo there's one that just like sticks out. And I've already talked about it on this channel even recently, but we're going to talk about it again. Let's get started. Now, before I jump into the footage here, I just want to say like the chase strategy was pretty sound. East and Southeast, it gave us that South escape option. And it's how I would have chased this storm regardless. Had we not been already planning on bailing south, I probably would have chased it this way anyways. I just like boundary storms. I went into this day, extreme instability, a boundary. This tornado is going to do really weird things if it happens. And of course it did. So I wanted to keep my distance because of that. Like. I don't want to be like in a dangerous position. Like we're not going to the bear's cage today. This is not a day to go to the bear's cage. That was my thinking the whole way through. So with that said, let's get to the video and I'll talk about what I was doing that day. Storms are rapidly initiating along the dry line. Tornado outbreak is imminent. The day started off it started off fast as a supercell exploded into the sky on the triple point in central Oklahoma. Almost immediately, the lightning was off of the charts, which is common with extreme instability environments. Multiple storms formed in a very small area. As a constructive cell merger occurred, a brief tornado was spawned. We were east of the tornado at this time, but we're now west of what was a rapidly strengthening mesocyclone. We opted to approach this feature from the west and south. At this point, even a casual observer could tell it was tornado time, and trust me, we had a few of those on this chase. It was obvious to me this storm was jogging a little south of east, which was likely due to the boundary effects as well as the cell merger that just took place. My plan of attack was to stay south and east of this cell the whole way. This tornado moved southeast, but eventually turned left to the north. This was not a surprise at the time and honestly did not catch us off guard. Tornadoes making hard left turns was a well-known phenomenon even back in 2013. What did catch me off guard, though, was our escape route. It was blocked by traffic. Now, I'm not going to lie. Like, when I was done with El Reno, like when I was done chasing May 31st, 2013, and I was stuck in that massive traffic jam, I was highly annoyed. I was, I was like... First off, why didn't the dry line fire further south? Like this was the plan. We were gonna get south and that was gonna be the thing. And also like why, where, where did all these people come from? And also that storm was like really HP. It was kind of like there were multiple vortices. That was an impressive tornado. That, like, that was pretty impressive, but that really wasn't what we were looking for today. And I was kind of let down, honestly. Like I, I was thinking, hmm, I, my, my forecast didn't pan out so well today. So I was thinking that. And it turns out as the evening and as the next day wore on, obviously really bad things happened. But I think that a couple of safety lessons that we need to talk about start off with the very notion that El Reno was unique because tornadoes doing weird things, not unique. Let's take a look. Anytime I talk about weird tornado tracks, I have to start with this one. The Greensburg, Kansas EF5 in 2007 did a really weird thing towards the end. 
the tornado almost loop back on itself and there are several storm chasers who have pretty harrowing stories from that moment where they almost got hit but greensburg was not the only tornado to make a weird path that night another to reference is the bennington kansas tornado in 2013 doing its best attempt at a fish here's one from iowa in 2015 where the tornado just kind of did whatever it felt like and we've talked about this night on the channel already, but here's the April 19, 2023 night of the Twisters in central Oklahoma, where tornado paths were distributed in such a manner that you couldn't help but feel the atmosphere was just making it up as it went. So when we talk about El Reno's place in terms of weird tornado tracks, it's really not that unusual. So the first practical safety lesson off of that, off of El Reno, off of these other examples, is that you want to give yourself an escape option that's clear. Not an escape option full of hail. Not an escape option that would go under the wall cloud, under the tornado. You want to give yourself an escape option that's good. The way you do that is you stay right. Like storm spotters, if you're watching this, uh, storm chasers, if you're watching this, public if you're watching this you want to make sure that you are to the right of that storm motion like you want to be to the east southeast something like that away from the storm because then you have a clear south option almost always or a clear east option almost always and you want to have that because when, when things go south when the tornado does something weird which we just talked about you're going to be able to get out of the way Another thing, being close to tornadoes is risky. Like when a tornado makes one of these sudden shifts like this, which is not unheard of, if you are right next to it and it shifts towards you, you have very little time to react. So if you see a tornado and uh, your thought is to outrun it, your thought is that it's fine, it's over there, a tornado shift. Typically they shift to the left, sometimes to the right, but they do shift, they do weird things. And you do not want to be playing with that. You, you, want to, you want to give yourself distance, especially if you don't know what you're doing around tornadoes. Now, a couple of other interesting lessons I took from this day are that when wind shear is moderate, low end, but there's extreme instability and there's a boundary, this was well known well before El Reno, but I give those storms a lot of latitude because HP storm modes, first off, that's a problem. Storms that can move erratically, especially along boundaries, problem. And then, of course, huge instability. These storms would be cranking out lightning. They could be doing all sorts of things. And with that weaker wind shear, things could happen with hail too. So you have to just like context sensitive, but anytime those three things are happening at once, that's my cue, like I, even today, like I have seen 200 tornadoes, lots of tornadoes. I'm staying back from those storms. Now, the last thing, last safety lesson, the last thing to take from this, I mean, it seems obvious. And seriously, storm chasing is dangerous. Storms are dangerous. Tornadoes are dangerous. You need to like have that in mind. Like these things kill people. These things maim people. These things throw cars like toothpicks. You have to keep that in mind. You have to have respect for tornadoes. Don't try to outrun these things. Don't try to cross over its path. Don't put yourself in a bad position. Tornadoes are dangerous. Storms are dangerous. Please don't do something stupid. If you haven't done so, our newsletter, the link is in the description. Subscribe to that because you're going to get notices of upcoming live storm chases, upcoming storm setups, and finally, videos that we have put out. So please do that. Subscribe to our newsletter. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Leave a comment. Ask us questions. I am going to be happy to make videos to answer those. And finally, weather is for everybody. And that includes you. Stay safe out there, but that includes you. If you're watching storms from your front porch, from the down the road in the driveway, like whatever you're doing, stay safe and remember weather's for you. We'll see you next time.